Proverbs 31 27 tells us, she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. As homemakers, there are so many things that we have to do from cleaning, meal planning, cooking food, caring for the kids, that sometimes it can be so overwhelming that we allow idleness to sneak in. My prayer for this video is that the Holy Spirit would speak through me to help you overcome idleness in your home. Welcome to my living room mess. I am going to just ignore this mess because my day needs to start with Bible. I'm going to be reading my Bible and doing my Bible in a Year podcast with Father Mike. I have my children here, per usual, but I still need to get that time in. And if you watched my tip video for being productive, starting with God and prayer and worship and His Word is just going to be the best way that you can start your day. Starting my day with God in His Word and in prayer gives me the strength, motivation, and encouragement that I need to do all of the things that need to get done throughout the day. Whether it is one task, five tasks, ten tasks, I can only do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Think about how easy it is to think of all of the things that need to be done, the things you should be doing, and just get discouraged to just really fall into the trap of, oh, well, maybe I'll do it later, or I'll do it tomorrow, or it's okay if it doesn't get done. That is idleness knocking on our door. That is the devil tempting us to do nothing. But Proverbs 31, that woman is a virtuous woman that does not have idle hands. It says that she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. Now, although today, some of us may be, but most of us are not getting wool and doing necessarily the things per se that the Proverbs 31 woman is doing. But what the moral of the story is, is that she is working. She's continuing, continuously looking for a way to feed her family, to better her family. And she does not just sit there and hope that things come to her, hope that things get done. She looks at tasks and she completes them because she turns to the Lord for strength. And that is what we need to do in all of these tasks. We need to turn to him, ask him for strength to help us and then we will be able to do more tasks than we even know that we are capable of. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 8 through 9 say, The one who plants and the one who waters have a common end, and each will be rewarded in accordance with his labor. For we are God's co-workers, you are God's field, God's building Paul is telling us those who work, those who put in the work, the effort, they will be rewarded because of their labor. We are God's workers. We are in God's field on the earth that he created. We are to be working for him in all of the tasks, all of the little tasks that we think are pointless but they are not because we are God's working hands and he is using those hands to do his will. After giving God my first fruits of my time in the morning, I cleaned up the kitchen and had the kids help me clean up the living room. I love to have them help even though they don't always put things back in the right spot or the right way. I just love holding them accountable and responsible for the toys that they get out. At the end of the day, I just tell them whatever you get out, you have to put away. And then of course I always help them, but it is a good reminder for them and it is good work ethic practice for them to actually pick up things that they have gotten out. So I was meal planning. I am using my four week meal plan this week. You can get this for free at westmanacademyhomeschool.com or I will have the link down below. And then I just went shopping. I went to Walmart, got the groceries that I needed for the week and am now putting them away. When I am overwhelmed and struggling to get things done or super unmotivated, I remember 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. This chapter has a great passage on Christian value of work. I'm going to read verses 10 through 12 for you. It says, In fact, even when we were with you, we charged that anyone who was unwilling to work should not eat. Now, we have been told that some among you are living a life of idleness, not working but acting as busybodies. 
We command and urge such people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and earn their living. How convicting are those verses? Think of all of the times that you have struggled with the temptation of idleness, of putting things off and waiting and avoiding because you just didn't feel like it, because you were lazy. Think of what Paul is trying to tell us in this letter. We as Christian homemakers are not called to be busybodies. We are called to be productive, to be workers, to work hard and earn what we are working for. Proverbs 18, nine says, anyone who is lazy in his work is a brother to the man who wages destruction. Really think about that. Anyone who is lazy in his work is a brother to the man who wages destruction. We cannot let that be us. As much as I would love all my decorations and beautiful things to stay in the place that I put them, it is funny watching me go back through and just rearrange everything back to where I had it. I am just cleaning up after breakfast. You will notice my five-year-old daughter in many of these clips. She is such a little homemaker. She loves to help me with cooking and cleaning. She was begging me today if she could help mop. So she's all about it, and I want to take advantage of her excitement and encourage her and teach her along the way. So if you have a child who's really interested in what you are doing, invite them along with you. Because even though it may be easier and a little bit less frustrating to just get the thing that you were trying to do done and be able to do things uninterrupted, it is such a joy and just such a beautiful thing to be able to teach your child the skill and task of what you're doing and watching your work ethic will also shape theirs for the future. Although I am getting a lot done today, what I like to do is use a cleaning checklist that I purchased from Etsy. I will link it down below. It sorts out different cleaning tasks throughout the week. I laminated it and then I use a dry erase marker and just check mark the tasks that I complete. Even if I do a task that is set for Thursday on Monday, I will check mark it to make sure that throughout the entire week I get all of the tasks done. It gives me enough flexibility where I can do tasks when they're needed or one that might be quicker or one I have you know, more time for, but it also keeps me accountable to make sure everything I need to get done for the week does get done. I am just cutting some flowers from my flower bed out front. I'm making a beautiful arrangement. As much as I love all of these flowers outside to look at and in the front, I don't always utilize cutting a few and bringing them to my kitchen table. I've been scrounging flowers from ditches and random patches around our farm, but I decided that I wanted to use some of these beautiful ones from the front. And as silly as it is, maybe some of you can relate to me, seeing beautiful things, whether it be decorations that I like or flowers, really helps to motivate me to keep going. I don't know, maybe that's just me, maybe I'm, I'm weird or crazy, but it's kind of like the theory of when everything is clean, you're more motivated, that's how I am. But I also have that with seeing beautiful things that I like. While my five month old and two year old are napping, I am working on a tiered apron. I love to sew. I don't always have time to sew, but I try to make time. I am sewing with my four year old and five year old in the room. I'm trying to play with them and sew. I'm trying to multitask, but I'm working on sewing while the youngest two are napping. Then I am just doing some laundry. I keep that going throughout the day. I try to do one load every day, but if I don't have enough for a load, which I usually do, then I will just do it every other day. Sometimes I will wait two days and then end up getting two loads, but I tried to do a load a day and that just works the best for us and our family. You may have also noticed that our laundry room is pretty much attached to our kitchen, so I can't have a bunch of laundry and laundry baskets there. It just doesn't work out, but it works with my once a day laundry method. I'm just going to hang this up on the line and just continue the day with some more homemaking. I shared 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 10 through 12 with you earlier. Now I want to share verses 4 through 8. It says, 
We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do what we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of the Messiah. In the name of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, we command you, brothers, to keep away from every brother who is living in idleness and not living according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know what you must do to imitate us. We never lived in idleness among you. We did not eat anyone's food without paying for it. Instead, with toil and labor, we worked night and day in order not to be a burden to any of you. With these verses, I really want you to think of anyone or anything in your life that is not helping you to be on a spiritual path. Think of the things that you're watching, whether it's just scrolling through social media for too long. What are the things or the people in your life that are causing you to be idle, that are contributing to you being lazier, unmotivated? Are you sitting there scrolling through social media? Are you wasting time talking and gossiping? Who are people in your life? What are things that you are doing that are not helping you to be on the path toward salvation? that are only helping to bring you down to the temptation of being idle, to being gossipers, to falling into sin. Really analyze the people and the things in your life that are really just toxic to you, to your relationship with Jesus, and to your path of salvation. My son just woke up from his nap. My two-year-old is still sleeping. We are about to go wake her up. But during that time, I took about an hour to sew an apron. I'm working on a tiered apron. I'm trying a bunch of different aprons to see what would be the best and most beautiful apron to make a tutorial for. I did have my four-year-old and five-year-old in there with me. So if you were wondering, wow, she's sewing for this long. I don't know how she did it. I had a four-year-old and five-year-old with me. And I honestly played this dog game with them as I sewed just verbally. They had my tape measure as a leash and I also gave them just scrap pieces of cloth and fabric that they could cut up so that entertained them. It did make a mess. That's what I am used to. I'm going to give them something to do. It will make a mess but it's going to be worth it because I can get something else done. So I'm going to spend some time with my son here before I wake up my two-year-old daughter. My kids are playing right out this big, you can't really see a big bay window so I can watch them. I wanted them to run around, get some exercise. Since we've been doing things inside, I try to keep them out of the way of my husband while he's mowing and doing stuff, but normally my husband would be at work. So I'm, I'm not used to him being around. This is a, a rare occasion before he starts his new job. So we've been enjoying homemaking. I completed the living room, the dining room, the kitchen. I had just added some flour into the canisters. I still have to wipe down some things, put away some dishes. But otherwise, it's going pretty well. I'm sure you can hear the dryer in the background. But the laundry's going. I have a quilt out on the line. It is fairly windy, so I kept the clothes out there. Fairly minimal, but it's been so far a successful day of homemaking. But even more than getting things done, I've been able to be with my children, which is a really big thing that I think homemakers often stay-at-home moms, and then anyone who goes to work full-time, part-time misses, and it's just such a beautiful opportunity to do anything with my children. So as much as some tasks are so much easier and I get very frustrated, you know, when I can't do something alone, having my kids with me is really a blessing, not only to me, but to them, because I was able to teach my children sewing things as they were in there, and although they may not remember them 100%, I know that they picked up on a little bit and it will help them in the future. So I want to build that quality time with them. Don't forget as homemakers, as parents, or maybe you don't have kids yet, but you might in the future, that time with your children is going to be the most valuable and is going to be the biggest payoff that you could ever do more than wiping down, mopping, cleaning, sweeping, having a perfect home. Nothing adds up to the amount of value and just the greatness of being able to have quality time with your kids. I have some tea going. I'm gonna wake up my two-year-old. My kids and I like to, after nap time, do a saint study. So we are doing Teresa of Lisieux. And I bought these cards from Amazon. I will link them below. I actually have a second pack 
they're two different brands and they cover different saints, some the same saint, but they're different types of cards. I will link them both down below, but I love these cards. My kids love them. We are just watching a couple videos, both on YouTube and form.org. I believe it's form.org and not form.com. I will also link that down below just on the saints. I love to learn about inspiring men and women that just point to Jesus because that, if you are a saint, that is what you do. And that is what I strive for. So I just put some decaf tea in cups with a little bit of honey. And my kids just love it. We love to watch and just talk. Sometimes I will print off worksheets or coloring pages. But we will just spend about a week or two to three days learning about the saints. We'll obviously come back to saints because your kids can forget. I also put these on strings or hang them up so that you can see them. But the tea is going, so we are going to A very beautiful and motivating verse is Ephesians 4:28. It says, "Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need." This is a great reminder for us. We work for ourselves and our family, but we need to work for others. What good things are we getting from God because we work that we need to share with others? Think of the people God has placed in your life, the passions, the desires that you have to change the world or to help fix things. What is it that God placed in your heart that he wants you to help? Who did he bring to you that he wants you to help? Don't just work for yourselves, but work for those who God called us to love. After we completed our saint study, I actually helped my husband outside until now, so I look pretty gross. We've been running chicken wire, and for supper, I'm going to be making the one pan vegetable kielbasa. You can find this recipe at westmanacademyhomeschool.com. You can download this entire four-week meal plan for free. I will have the link down below. This is just going to be something pretty simple, easy, quick. I am really hot and gross, but... I still wanted to keep going with this video. Uh, we've actually, now that we have a pool at our house, we actually have been swimming almost every day. So I haven't really been wearing makeup or doing my hair because I don't know when we want to swim. I would love to swim right now, but I need to get supper going. I am just preparing dinner. I showed you the recipe of what I am using. Again, you can find the link down below to this, but I love one pot skillets or sheet pan dinners, anything that I can just throw into one is just wonderful. I just wanted to say that my kids actually really loved this meal and we took the leftovers and put it in scrambled eggs for the morning. It was really delicious. And I know that this was a lot of cutting, chopping, dicing, cutting, how, whatever you call it. It's not my favorite thing to do if I'm honest, but I love all of the beautiful harvests of the summer, all the summer seasonal foods. And I love that my children are getting these nutritional vegetables and just all this different flavor mixed in different meals. So you can add chicken to this, you can add ground beef. It doesn't have to be specifically kielbasa. You can make it however you would like, but this is just such a beautiful meal. I love all the colors and I love watching my family eat it and really think, wow, this is good for them. This is something that I feel good about spending my time making because a lot of homemade meals do take a lot of time, not all of them, but it does take time. It takes more time than throwing something from a box onto a skillet or into a boiling pot of water. So it's just, there's so much satisfaction in watching your family and just seeing the health benefits and their happiness after eating, it makes everything worth it. So I, Highly recommend that if you haven't started cooking from scratch, if it seems overwhelming or intimidating, don't be scared, start small, even just twice a week meals that you make completely from scratch, nothing from cans, nothing from a box, something that you make with your own hands because these little meals that do take time and are a lot of work are also a gift from God and a gift from you to your children. I 
have a few more verses I just wanted to share. One is from Matthew 10, verse 38, that says, And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And I wanted to share this one because laziness or idleness may be a cross that you have been given to bear. Each one of us has a cross that we have to ask Jesus to help us carry. We must carry it and follow him like it says in Matthew. And we can't carry it on our own. We need his help. But I want you to not be discouraged. If laziness or idleness is something that is just a huge struggle for you, is something that you have prayed about, cry over, and just really feel disheartened about, I want you to know that it is okay. It's okay for it to be your cross. It's okay for it to be a struggle. Not every day is going to be perfect. Not every day are you going to feel motivated and encouraged and ready to just conquer the day and get all the things done. I want this video to really just be an encouragement that you can come back to because you will have days over and over that you just feel like laying on the couch, that you just feel like you cannot accomplish one more thing. You will not make it. This is when we need to turn to the Lord, when we need to say, okay, I am struggling with this. Lord, help me. Lord, give me the strength and the courage, the motivation, the power to be able to keep going, to keep going for my family, to keep going for myself, for my friends but mainly to keep going for you, Lord. So that is just a daily prayer that I have, if I'm completely honest with you. And it's okay if it's your daily prayer too. The other Bible verse I wanted to share with you is more of an encouragement. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. And how beautiful and encouraging is that our work in the Lord, our labor in the Lord is not in vain. It is not wasted. It is not pointless. It is not useless. He sees us. He loves us. He just encourages us because the work that we do is his work. Remember when I said earlier, we are his hands. We are doing his work because we are helping others. We are providing for others. We are loving others. So I hope that this video and his words have really spoken to you today. I pray that you have the heart of the Lord and that you just choose to serve him with happiness in every little thing. It is okay to have those days where you are struggling when you just feel like you can't keep going. But turn to the Lord and he will give you strength. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kelsey and I make a new video on homemaking, homeschool, and creating a wholesome home. Thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing.